But do y'all this is Courtney and we gonna talk about another Masters of Horror episode. This one is titled Pelts by Dario Argento. Yes indeed, one of the godfathers, yeah. Um Dario Argento, he gave us the three mothers, uh Suspiria, Tenebra, Inferno. The three sisters. Um, as you know, they did a, a remake of Suspiria. Um, starring uh uh motherfucking what what that girl name? Dakota She played Bella, not Bella, Anastasia, whatever off of motherfucking fifty fifty shades of grey. And um the woman that's on everything. Tilda Swinton or something? I don't know. Huh. But, yeah. He gave us that. He gave us the three mothers. And so, uh, he decided to do an episode called Pelts. It's based off a short story from F. Paul Wilson. Um, yeah. He, um, F. Paul Wilson, he does, I think he does, uh, crime and horror and some form of sci-fi or whatnot. I went to pull up his shit and um check out his goddamn resume. He got a whole lot of books. He got multiple series, book series. But um whereas let's talk about Pelts. Now uh I do I wanna say I uh Dale Jata Whereas with the three mothers, you know, it's all about color skin. You know, his his motif, especially with them, was like deep, bright color saturations and shit. And, uh, you know, dealing with the motherfucking witches, occult and all that stuff. Whereas with Pelts, Pelts deals with obsession, dealing with curse land, curse, uh, what uh, curse land, uh, you could say curse objects if you want to, being that the pelts do drive folks uh go mad and basically fuck up their own shit. So you can deal with that. Okay, it's starring meatloaf. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. That meatloaf. So he is he he uses pelts and he makes like fur coats, different with all kinds of different fur, with fur coats. Bare skin rugs and not so he like a fur trader. And he's a ain't shit fur trader. Uh he works his motherfucking workers, the people that's under here like slaves. He's like a slum boss of employers. And um I wanna say this is his brother that worked with him. It seems like the people that work under him, they like the brother more than him. And, uh, like I said, he, like I said, this episode also dealing with obsession. He has this obsession with this stripper named Shana. Um, this pretty, uh, black girl. So, uh, his whole goal, his whole objective is to find a way to get in that bitch's puss. Cause that's all he want to do. He wants to get in her fucking puss. But she like, she don't go that way. Uh, she don't like him like that, and I think the way she's saying, "Dick ain't her, dick ain't her judge," or whatever. So, uh, we see at the beginning of the damn uh episode, you know, he just got through cutting on some pelts. Then he goes and check and see, like, what that look like? So cow, cow, cow hair, whatever. It got stained pink. And so, he going off on his workers, and he told me, I ain't got time for this, I got somewhere to be. And basically, he goes to this strip club, and basically, uh, hounds and, uh, lusts after Shauna, the stripper. So, he goes back there, you know, he goes back into, the, I like to call it the champagne room or whatever, where, you know, you get your private, private dances and shit like that. So, he goes, pay, pay, well, he waited to get back there. And he goes see Shauna. 
Now, uh, Shana, you know, she talks about him as soon as he, as soon as, you know, she showed the fuck up and talking about, you know, you smell like motherfucking dead flesh. And so, you know, she dances around, around him, you know, taunt, sim, temp, simple, but that's what strippers do, bitch, you know, but he ain't supposed to touch her. That's a rule. You don't touch the merchandise. And the merchandise will touch you now, but you ain't supposed to touch him. So he gives her her money and she do her dance. She strips off her bra and all that stuff. She got cute titties. I wish my titties would perk like that, but I'm a big bitch. So, you know, so she's fucking with, um, you know, dancing up on her, grinding her butt. Now, man, you, this was back in 2005. You tell this bitch ain't no real stripper cut. We ain't popping puss on a handstand. We ain't twerking or nothing. We ain't shooting shit out your cooch. Let me tell you this quick little story. I went to the uh motherfucking bachelor party. They had male strippers and female strippers. And all that stuff. They had a male stripper. He was the shortest motherfucker there, but his dick was about 13 fucking inch. And all that stuff. He could pick it up and just beat your side of the head with it and all that stuff. But they also had those female strippers. Now, you know, do the regular routine strip, twerk, and all that stuff like that. But, you know, she was smoking out of her cooch. So you see, this 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 that is hella fat time, bruh. Hella fat time from the shit I have seen. Personally, shit I have witnessed. And so he pushes himself on her. We can always tell he got raper. He got rapist tendencies. And he tried to get her coach. Luckily, she was able to get away from him and all this stuff. And had a chair, and he said, I paid for it. i like, listen here, this old title, dick-ass nigga. Nigga, you paid for her to dance. You ain't paid for the for the play up in her wonderland, bro. That's extra money, bro. Bands to make her dance. You're going to have to start, throw some bands to make that bitch want to dance on your dick, my nigga. So, you know, she kicks him out. And he said, don't worry, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm going to have something. You gonna, I'm going to make sure I'm going to get that pussy. <coughs> so that's that's his goal in life, to get in between her motherfucking legs, y'all. Excuse me, y'all. So we go see this fur trapper and his son. It's nighttime. And they finna bust up in this land. This land that they ain't supposed to go to, Mother Mater. Mother Mater's land, right? And um, now she done, people don't go there. Because she done uh, have all these uh, cautionary tales. They say, if you go there, something bad gonna happen to you, blah, 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 to keep folks off her land. And so the boy like, we ain't supposed to be on here. <laughs> and you know, the old dude like, man, fuck that old bitch. She just talking shit and everything. Listen. Now, some kind of way, I guess earlier he put traps down, and so they basically going to see did the traps catch in the white. So they walk upon, you can see a ruin, ruin of a city, and stuff like that. And um, you can look at some of the stonework, it glistens, it, it, it shimmers, and stuff like that, right? And so the boy, he already done fascinated with the stonework. And so where they go, how many traps did they send? He must have had like dozens of traps out. Each trap he set out, motherfucker caught white. Now they showing like one of the uh uh pieces of the ruins, and it has raccoon, you know, raccoon etches in it. Let me tell y'all something. I don't fuck. With, listen, raccoons are the hood niggas of the forest. The are the goons of the forest. Now, I don't know where whoever watched this, where y'all from. But down here in Mississippi, we do not fuck with raccoons. We'll run from them quick. You do not want to get caught up by a raccoon. You do not want to fight a raccoon. Them are thug hood ass niggas of the forest. One day, one night, some can fuck with my trash. I went outside, my mom was at the door and all that stuff. Not though my trash can and everything. I put the stuff up and something something told me couldn't look around. Look behind you, bitch. Turn around and look, it was a goddamn raccoon. It wasn't no grown one. 
It wasn't no baby either. Thank the Lord it wasn't no baby because if it was a baby, then the mama would have been somewhere near. But it was a teenager. Me and that teenager taught that fucking front yard. <laughs> front porch. I, I'm calling my mama tell mama get the, you know, baby, where you at? Mama, where you at? Mama done left me out there to left me out there to battle that goddamn raccoon. But you know that raccoon ain't want none. I ain't want none. We both scared of each other and shit like that. The raccoon was block was right where I needed to go to get up in the motor, get back in the fucking house, y'all. So that raccoon bucked off and I ran back in the house. I was so mad at my mom. My mama said, every nigga for the sales, I guess. So they go get the raccoons. You know, all of them, they don't got caught. So he basically tells them how to kill them. You snap the neck, step on the neck. If not, you bash the skull in. And so one of the raccoons left that trap, you know, chewed through his damn arm so it won't get caught the fuck up. So they got all the raccoons right. They walking. Mother made it on the porch and all that stuff. And he said, shit, they going to mother made it and they, and they haul ass. What the fuck? Y'all seen that? But you go to their house, and you know they are, uh, you know, skinning the raccoons and all that stuff. And basically, the raccoons' fur is so luxurious. And basically, what homeboy saying, like some of the most beautifulest furs there is. Not a bald spot, not nut, and it said it looked like it came from the same family. Like each each hide is identical. Now, with the raccoons is anybody that fuck with the the hides, anybody that touch the hides or whatever, they end up fucking themselves up. So the boy, he already in love with the uh hides, and he like, you know, these hides make me feel some kind of way and stuff like that. So the old man, he goes to his room, leaves his son to clean up. So he calls Jake, which is Meatloaf's character, and basically said, "Listen, I got some furs for you, blah 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 blah. Try to set up a deal and shit like that." Mind you, the son is so enamored with the goddamn. Uh, fucking uh, pelts the raccoon pelts, what they call them pine lights. That's what mother made her call them pine lights. And so, he uh, why the dad is like in the bed, you know, sleep or whatever. The son go get some bed, right? Son gets a bed, go wake up his dad. And bashes his dad's skull in. And while he doing that, he has this look on his face of like. Why he doing that? This look here. And then he offs himself off, right? Bear trap. He opens the trap up, looks down at it, smile, and boom. Does his head up in it, and the trap cuts his fucking face off, y'all. And he's dead. And his and that piece of his face that's in the damn trap. And so Jake and um Jake and uh uh his brother is that his brother? That gotta be his brother. They go to the trappers. You know, to uh get the uh uh the see about the about the uh coats and stuff. Well, not about the coats, about the furs. And because a month later, it's supposed to be some kind of um, it's like fur expo, almost like a fashion show. And so they need something to basically set them off the top and everything, make them make them a, a wide known name. Basically, Jake is only doing this so he can make money, so he could so he could get Shauna. So you remember what I said? He has this obsession with her. So they go in there. Jake and his brother go in there. His brother like, listen, we got to call the police and everything. What the fuck happened? All thing on Jake's mind is that goddamn fur. 
is that goddamn highs off them raccoons and shit. So, you know, homeboy like Jake like, we finna get these get these uh get these pelts and shit, right? Yeah. And we'll call the police from the highway while we so far away. Okay, but we, we snatching these pelts though, bro. And so they go get them pelts. Now when they bring the pelts back to the factory, and you know his workers there, you know his workers, they like old Asian ladies and stuff like that. It's it's almost it's like reminiscent of a fucking sweatshop. So them them one the one of them Asian ladies, one of the old ones, she looking at that shit like mm-mm. So I'm guessing she already knew something is up with them motherfuckers. But you know, gotta go do whatever. You know, that's her job. So, while he doing that, he decided he gonna make a jacket and a, a fur coat. And so with that fur coat, he gonna use the uh, snare shiner in. So he goes to the strip club where she had to talk to her. Now, Shana's in her room uh, eating the fuck out of this girl's box. I mean, gone to fucking town, right? And so, you know, Jake comes, disrupt this shit, and she's like, Boy, did I tell you I ain't got shit to do with you, bruh? Why is you here, bruh? And he basically tells her about the Expo. And I'm guessing in that town, that Expo is big. And being that town, it must run like with fur trade and all that stuff like that. So, she's like, okay, I'll do it. And, you know, basically like, you know, if if it does go down, she'll give her some of that ping, ping bitch or whatever so that's all the city that, that motherfucking jake need to go make that goddamn coat so gotta do that sergio 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 whatever that works for him while they set cutting the pieces of the motherfucking pelt to do whatever sergio ain't cutting that shit like he ain't supposed to he just clipping it real hard Milo said, that ain't how you do it, bro. This is how you do it. And he said, if you fuck this shit up again, bro, I'm going to cut your goddamn testicles off. Scared the shit out of him, right? And so, it shows homeboy Sergio up in his car, and he drink it, right? He go open up his shirt, right? Listen, these cut scenes are some of the nastiest shit. This, I don't know where he got these big ass. What's it, scissors? He pulls something out of the bag. I don't know what them big ass scissors or a knife and basically cuts through his torso, cuts his skin, and start pulling his shit apart. Putting out his test and all that stuff like that. The goddamn the goddamn shit. The them, them pelts. That's what them curse pelts. Cause something about them motherfucking raccoons. So basically, you know, yeah. So they need more pelts from what I'm gathering. So uh Jake he goes back to the uh fur trappers joint and see a ball of moonshine and all that stuff, you know. Hicks, they got moonshine. I want some moonshine. I had moonshine in a couple of years. But, uh, and find this map. Basically, this map is to Mother Mater's fucking land. And so, he goes, you know, goes to the land and go and meets Mother Mater. And, you know, he's talking and all that stuff. And she's like, you talk about the pine lights. That basically she called them raccoons. And you can see all around her house, looking through the windows, it's them raccoons. And so the raccoons are sentinels. They look over the ruins of that lost city in the woods. And I'm and I'm wondering, being that it's raccoons that are, you know, imprinted, you know, it's carved into the motherfucking stonework. Was it some sort of raccoon god? That's what I'm gathering. Maybe it was some kind of form of raccoon god that was worshiping and stuff like that. And being that they don't fuck with Mother Mater, cause Mother Maker, I guess her job is to is to protect her. 
of the raccoons of that lost city or whatnot. So, you know, she, uh, uh, he tells her, being like, how about if you let me get a couple of raccoons so I can breed more, uh, uh, fur? And she looks at him, she said, it was you. You the one that came last night and took and killed all the raccoons. And he like, no, man, that wasn't me. And she scared so She grabbed, I don't know what the fuck, she had a pitchfork or some shit and ran them out of there. And when she ran them out, right, she cursed his ass. I know she did, cause she started speaking another fucking tongue, and she said the raccoons ain't do ain't through with you yet or some fucking shit. She cursed his fucking ass, and all that stuff. I like, bro, you was already fucked, cause you got them motherfucking pills. It just got motherfucking worse, my nigga. At the she don't fucking curse your ass, bro. So he comes back and people are gathered around. They look like what happened? The worker, the main one that I said that when she saw them pelts, she had to look like on her face like, no, nah, I don't know about this shit. Homegirl started sewing her mouth, her eyelids, and her nose and basically suffocated herself. And what was funny, when she started on her nose, right, she just went and did it like that. I said, girl, you about as calm as me when I pierced my own septum. And all that stuff. Plus, I was high. I, can, I don't do pain well. But, uh, so, you know, it's already fucked up. That bad juju is all through that. But that coat is pretty, though. That fur coat is pretty. That coat shimmers and all that fucking shit, bro. And shimmers. It looks alive. That's what, It looks alive. That's exactly what it looks like. And so, the coat is finished. So, he basically said, call the ambulance. Do what you need to do, but keep this shit quiet. Now, the brother, he like, just something ain't right. He's like, maybe, that, maybe, maybe it's cursed and stuff like that. But as we know, Jake don't give a fuck. He his own his own concern is I got this coat. I use the coat to get in this bitch's pussy. All copacetic bitch. That's basically what he what what he's worried about. What I tell you ain't nothing but obsession, bro. Oh fuck this. So he takes the coat and he's gonna go visit Shauna. So he goes where Shauna stays at and i'm trying to figure out how that nigga found out where you stay at bitch so he been following your ass too so he goes to where she's at and um i gotta move my light and um and basically shows her the coat and the coat is the prettiest thing she ever felt and she puts it on she like Motherfucker, I ain't never taking this motherfucker bad bitch off, bro. God, good, God damn, this motherfucker look good. And you know he plays with it, talking about you know maybe you get a chance to mile it, yada yada, boom, boom, boom. And she already know what's up. She don't want to take off that coat, bro. And so she like, mm mm, nah, I ain't taking this coat off. Okay, you can get it. <laughs> like she, they fuck right. And so they doing whatever. He going hog wild in. And she said, oh my God, you too big. And I'm like, I guess so, bitch. He been aiming. He been uh, yearning and burning for your motherfucking asshole. So, I, okay, whatever. And so after they get through, now why he doing what they rutting right? His face is all up in that fur. He is licking that fur and everything. It's almost, it's animalistic. Basically, that's that's not sex. It's not fucking. It's rutting. Animalistic rutting. And so he like he gets up. They finish like, where's your bathroom? And basically says, I'm gonna find something sharp. And so she like, what? And he's like, oh, I mean, I'm finna freshen up. And I like, yeah, here comes some fuck shit, y'all. That motherfucker goes in. He see a knife on the counter up in the fucking kitchen, right? Goes up in the bathroom. And with the greatest of ease, man, when I told you, they had this look like. He gets that knife and start cutting. 
go around the neck, toward, you know, lower part of the stomach, underarm, and he pulled when he showed, this is where he shows the pain that is when he basically ripping it from the membrane, ripping his skin from the membrane. So he basically got a vest of his goddamn skin, y'all. And so he goes to where Hunger home, still looks right in herself up in that goddamn front of the bed. So he said, try this old bitch. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and she is spazzing. And he chases her through the motherfucking apartment build, apartment first. She running. Man, she still got on heels, bitch. She kicks them bitches out and haul ass and run, right? And so she hits the lift, the elevator lift, whatever, goes in, close the gate, and go, you know, pushing it down. And he steadily got this, his his uh, meat vest. She call it meat vest. And he hollers, shut up, girl, I got something for you to wear, bitch. Here, girl. <laughs> and what he does, he pulls open the gate. Mind you, the lift, she's down a story down, right? It's just like a story down. And so, he lifts up the gate, jumps, falls in the damn lift, right? Now, man, you, this side of his face, all of this is just fucked. All of that just fucked, right? And so, she's trying to open up the door again so she get the fuck out. So, the door is rising. He grabs her leg. She falls. She's trying to kick him and y'all. The sound, bitch. The sound. Listen, I could over I could get through the look, see he ain't got no skin, but the sound. You hear it? It's juicy. It's juicy, y'all. You could just hear the juice. The juice of the goddamn of the fucking blood, membrane, skin and shit. Whenever it makes contact, it's like just juicy. Y'all like, oh God, oh my God, I need to mute. I'm gonna have to mute this for before too long. That's that's what that was me, right? And so he's grabbing the by the foot. I'm saying, is he trying to still get more puss, bitch, y'all? Is that what he trying to do, y'all? Jesus. And so next thing you know, I'm trying to remember how that nigga die. So. She goes and so she goes and um he gotta be dying cause ain't no way that nigga gonna live through this shit, right? Her arm gets caught. Her arm gets caught cause the door is coming down and the lift is coming up and her arm gets caught and she dies from blood loss. And it it it's pretty man fucking carnage through the whole that whole elevator slip, y'all. And so the brother comes and basically sees all the blood. The blood, blood, see his brother there. He missing his fucking torso skin. See the see the stripper bitch. She got one hand and number blood. And you hear some woman in the background sing some folklore shit or some shit like that, right? And that's how it fucking ends. That's pelts. Now, when I was, you know, reading up on it and all that stuff, it was people saying that, you know, when Dario Argento did this, he was basically like, it was some black satire taking aim at the fear, at the fur traders industry. And people said that was kind of surprising, being that none of his movies do. He don't do movies that make poke, you know, the poke at like political things or some shit like that. So I guess the, you know, him doing pelts was like the first for him. So yeah, that's pelts. That's pelts, y'all. I don't, I like the pelts. I like the pelts. So yeah. Uh, what's what I'm gonna do next? Um, I think I'm gonna do dreams at the witch's house. Was I think, Lord, that's that probably not even how I go, but it's based off of HP Lovecraft, so I think that's the next one I'm gonna do. 
Um, dreams at the witch house. That's it. That's it, y'all. That's it. That's it. That's it. Dreams in the witch house. Yeah. We're going to do a little HP Lovecraft, y'all, for the next video. So, yeah. That's it, y'all. Let me know what y'all thought about below. And put down below. Oh, excuse me. Put down below. Uh, what's your favorite Dario Jato motherfucking movie? Do you love, do you like the Three Mother series? The Three Mother series. Now, he also has some other movies. He had a movie called Phenomen, uh, Phenomenum. Phenomenon. Phenomenum. There go my mouth. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. But, you know, he also had other movies other than the goddamn, um, three, the Three Mothers and stuff like that. Uh, what are those? Do you know of any? What's your, what's your favorite mothers? Do you like Sus Suspiria? Have you seen the motherfucking remake? Do y'all like it? I can't wait for that shit to come out. Cause I know it had a limited release. But I know it's gonna show up on Amazon Prime soon. So, but, uh, yeah. That's it, y'all. That's Pelts. So, I'm out. Bye.